Ladies and gentlemen, I chaired today the debate of the UN Security Council on challenges to peace and security in the Middle East. Our intention was to provide a forum to exchange views on both members of the Security Council, as well as countries from the region, meaning from the Middle East. The main objective of the meeting was to identify key regions' challenges and propose solutions to them. Participation of the countries from the Middle East was particularly important. Indeed, the debate continues. They start to express their opinion. Uh, we expect uh, interesting, uh, substantial contribution from the countries of the region to the problems, to the solution of the problems. In our opinion, only through dialogue with the countries of the region are we able to find common solutions. In my statement, I highlighted the importance to examine the challenges faced by the Middle Eastern countries from a horizontal perspective and to address the root causes of crisis. Problems that pose a threat to peace and security include terrorism, proliferation of weapons, maritime security, energy security, cyber threats, as well as humanitarian and human rights issues. Poland organized in February, together with the United States, a ministerial to promote peace and security in the Middle East in Warsaw. It was then announced that we would continue our engagement in the form of the Warsaw process. All states uh, invited to participate in that ministerial are also invited to join the seven working groups to discuss the above-mentioned horizontal issues. Their work will be summed up at the ministerial conference in the first months of next year. We believe that the Warsaw process will allow us to agree on further actions to improve security situation in the region. We need a positive approach, in our opinion, to restore peace and economic growth in the Middle East, promoting entrepreneurship, strengthening good governance, combating corruption, and ensuring access to education are key to address social issues and unlock economic potential of the region. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I first want to say thank you to Foreign Minister Chekatovich uh, and your whole team here in New York for uh, using uh, your time as a presidency of the Security Council to address peace and security in the Middle East. Uh, I hope all countries will heed Poland's example of tackling major global challenges. Uh, your leadership is just one reason President Trump's looking forward to his upcoming trip uh, here in just a few days uh, to Poland to commemorate the defense of our shared values during World War II. Uh, today's meeting built on what we started uh, last February in Warsaw at the Ministerial to promote a future of peace and security in the Middle East. More than 60 countries met there to find new solutions to old challenges in one of the most troubled regions of the world. Uh, we spent a good deal of time at the Warsaw Ministerial discussing the greatest ongoing threat to peace and security in the region, the Islamic Republic of Iran. I used my time today to condemn the regime's support to proxies in Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen, as well as its inexcusable and unprovoked sabotage and seizure of com commercial vessels in the Gulf. Iran's continued development and testing of advanced ballistic missiles in defiance of UN Security Council Resolution 2231 is also an issue that the international community must address. Failing to confront Iranian regime's malign activities will only grow the regime's multi-continental body count, spanning the last 40 years. But as in Warsaw, the conversation this morning was far broader than any one country or issue. We discussed the prospects for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. We discussed the need to keep fighting radical Islamic terrorists. We discussed the need to resolve humanitarian crises in both Syria and Yemen, which have been fueled by the actions of the IRGC and its Iranian proxies. And we discussed what we can do to increase social and economic opportunity throughout the region. There's no shortage of long-standing problems. What the world needs is new and creative solutions. And that's why the United States of Poland launched our ministerial in February. As part of it, we've created seven working groups dedicated to advancing shared priorities. Earlier this month, we released the details on the first five of these working groups, which will begin meeting in October. I want to be clear that no one issue or country will dominate those discussions. We will listen to all nations which want to express themselves to work collaboratively. We hope nearly 80 countries will join us in these. 
Finally, the launch of these working groups reflects the Trump administration's commitment to building coalitions to address many security challenges. We support meaningful multilateralism that gets results and reflects our values. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Rafael Steinschek, TVP Polish Public Television. Uh, in less than two weeks, President Donald Trump is going to visit Poland. So that's why I would like to ask you about relations between Poland and United States. And what role does Poland play in American foreign affairs? Thank you. That was uh, rather of questions to you, but let me, let me also <laughs> answer that questions. Uh, for, for us, uh, relations with the United States uh, are crucial. We, uh, are located in Central and Eastern Europe. For us, um, the threat perception is very important. We, are, we feel threatened by our eastern neighbor, uh, meaning Russia. Uh, the United States is a key state in NATO alliance. Uh, we attach great importance to our security. Therefore, we cooperate in military field. We are very pleased that the United States agreed to strengthen its military presence in Poland, increase the number of American troops stationing in Poland from uh, 2,500 to 5,500. Relations between our presidents are very good, often visits. A recent visit of President Andrzej Duda, second one to Washington a few months ago, and it was already announced that President Donald Trump will pay a visit in uh, Warsaw, in Poland, uh, within 10 days. To commemorate, to take part in the commemoration of the 80th uh, anniversary of the beginning of the Second World War, and also to uh, conduct uh, bilateral discussions on our common interest. We are very thankful to the United States for providing us also energy security. The discussion is going on on uh, import uh, to Poland from the United States uh, liquid gas, important uh, for us to diversify resources and for indeed for uh, uh, Euro all Europe uh, in order to be e e independent from uh, uh, Russia's supply. Uh, so, a lot of possibilities to uh, develop bilateral relations. Of course, we also share uh, assessment of threats in the world, and our today's meeting and involvement in the Warsaw process is an example of that. Uh, we perceive similarly the development of international relations. For us, of course, Poland is a member of the European Union, and it's our main partner. In today's discussions, I underlined that we agree with the EU position on Middle East, also concerning JCPOA. But at the same time, we understand that the European Union should maintain close links with the United States. Only within the United, with the United States, we can deal with serious problems in the world, such problems as the Middle East. The European Union alone will be not enough powerful and influential to deal with such important uh, problems or actors like Russia. I'd just add, we, we met uh, before the Security Council meeting today to talk about relations between our two countries, the issues that we're working on uh, together, and it took a long time. <laughs> that is, we are partners across a broad range of issues. The foreign minister uh, spoke about them. They range from en energy to counterterrorism, uh, intelligence issues, human rights issues, a, a broad range of issues where we're working together. You saw one example today at the UN Security Council meeting where we were talking about how to create stability in the Middle East, uh, but we, we worked together on Afghanistan, we worked in lots of places around the world together trying to deliver on our shared value sets. And so if you ask the relationship, it is, is based fundamentally on this vision for how the world ought to work, and they are, Poland is a great partner of the United States in each one of those efforts, even though from time to time we may not have the same solution. Um, we're always working towards the same objective. Thank you. Thank you both. I have a question, a question for each gentleman. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, uh, what sort of deliverables, if, if any, are you expecting out of the working groups, and have other countries uh, expressed interest in hosting the remaining two? Um, and Mr. Secretary, uh, there's a report that another Iranian vessel could be bound for Syria. I know that you issued a, a warning uh, about the grace. 
is there a, a U.S. plan? What is the U.S. plan to prevent that from happening? And then one final question on, on Russia. Um, there are reports that a, a number of nuclear monitoring stations went silent in the wake of the explosion at a, a missile test facility. Um, there's, Ru Russia says it has no obligation to disclose any information, and there are some critics who would say that the INF, the end of the INF treaty uh, allows them to operate with impunity. Could you address that, please? Go ahead and take the first one first. Or I'll, I'll take them both. The uh, United States has a set of sanctions that preclude uh, crude oil from being shipped to any country. We've made clear anyone who touches it, anyone who supports it, uh, anyone who allows a ship to dock uh, is at risk of receiving sanctions from the United States of America. So if that ship, again, heads to Syria, uh, we'll take uh, every ac action we can consistent with those sanctions to prevent that. Remember, the, the, the reason we don't want that crude oil to go to Syria, I think, is shared by the entire world. That crude oil will be offloaded, sold, used by the Quds Force an organization that has killed countless Americans and people all across the world. And we want to deny them the resources to continue the horrific terror campaign all across the world. That's the rationale for preventing a ship that's loaded with crude oil arriving in Syria. Your second question, I, I don't have anything I want to add today about the nuke monitoring stations uh, in Russia. Suffice it to say, we expect every country to live up to every one of its obligations with respect to reporting should there be an incident that relates to their nuclear activities. Just if I may add to the, 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 to the first question I tried to answer about the working group. So for the moment we have uh, decided on the host countries of five working groups. Indeed we discussed with some countries to host uh, the remaining two. They will be matured by uh, three, so to say, persons from Poland, United States, and the host country at the political level under secretary in terms of Poland. And they will simply look at the issue, be it uh, terrorism or cyber threats, and provide expertise. What should be done in order to guarantee uh, stability in this concrete horizontal issue? And then we already discussed today, we plan to organize a political meeting, ministerial, at the beginning of next year, probably in Washington, if we can say so, to sum up the uh, findings of experts and uh, reports uh, from this working group. We know that, at least I am aware of the fact, that it's very difficult to deal with such an important issue as, as Middle East. Many mm, people uh, tried to resolve that complex situation, but at least we decided to engage in that cooperation with the United States and at least try. It is not uh, guaranteed that we will uh, achieve success, but at least it's our obligation to try to uh, bring peace and stability to the region. Of course, not every country is happy with that initiative when you listen to the discussion, some countries already express concerns, but we are satisfied that majority of them support that way, particularly the EU member states, but also other countries. But we are aware that there is also a competition between countries, and uh, uh, as um, Secretary Pompeo said, every country who was invited to Warsaw uh, is invited, will be invited, and is being invited, to take part in the working groups. Also Russia. Russia was invited. I discussed the issue with Sergei Wavrov uh, when we met in Helsinki, and I told him that he would, that Russia would be invited. So we invite Russia, we invite China, we invite other actors to take part in the discussions. Of course, it's easy to organize uh, another meeting in Moscow, what was announced today, but is it the way to deal with that issue? So we look positively. Uh, to that issue, and we hope to achieve concrete uh, results uh, during this uh, the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.